Hey, this is the Tropical Tippet for Friday, August 25th. Taking a look at the Atlantic here, we have a couple of storms to watch. We're still tracking Tropical Storm Franklin, which crossed over the Dominican Republic a couple of days ago, bringing heavy rain and flooding, and may make a turn back toward the north and could pass fairly close to Bermuda in a few days. We're also going to talk later in the video about a new area of disturbed weather to watch in the Western Caribbean, which we hinted at being a possibility in videos earlier this week, and indeed is a threat to develop in the Gulf of Mexico in several days. We're going to start off with Franklin here. Here's a little bit of a closer view of the southwestern Atlantic. There's the exposed center of the storm here, and just like we discussed, this is struggling at the moment because there continues to be westerly winds aloft pushing all of the thunderstorm activity off to the eastern side of the center. So we haven't seen any appreciable strengthening of Franklin since it crossed Hispaniola. And aircraft data has found maximum winds of only in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range generally. And so the intensity is rather flatlined at the moment. However, things are going to change soon. This is the water vapor satellite loop, which continues to show a upper level trough draped across the southwestern Atlantic. This is what is shearing Franklin at the moment, but it's also a trough that is progressively thinning. So this trough axis is going to pinch off at some point and break into two pieces. This part will become a closed upper low that will back away to the southwest as Franklin's thunderstorm activity kind of pushes outflow toward the north and breaks this trough into two different fragments. As that happens, this western low will start to pivot Franklin around its eastern side toward the north and then northwest. And as this happens, the upper level flow is going to shift from westerly to out of the south or south-southeast, and that will lower the vertical shear over the storm and conditions will rapidly become more favorable for intensification. And we will likely see Franklin become a hurricane possibly a rather strong one during its journey north. And the steering for Franklin will be pretty straightforward. This is the large scale view of the Atlantic Ocean from the GFS mid-level steering flow here in about a day showing Franklin down here. And what you'll notice is that there's this trough digging into New England. And this is kind of keeping this break in the ridge here. We have a big ridge over the southern and central United States. We have the rest of the subtropical ridge over here. And between these two ridges, we have this lane opening up uh, due to this trough digging in to New England. So this is going to allow northward propagation of the storm. And uh, again, the upper level low to its west aloft will help pivot it maybe a little west of north. Uh, so maybe a northwestward motion for a little bit. And then as we go forward in time, what you'll see is that this trough continually gets reinforced over New England. So you'll see these smile-shaped contours all through this part of the world. And this is really setting the edge of this ridge and really opens up the lane toward the north and then northeast. This will protect the U.S. Eastern Seaboard. Franklin is not really a concern. There is no big ridge to steer it toward the U.S. Instead, the lane is open for a gradual recurvature track toward the north and then northeast. However, this does open up Atlantic Canada to the potential for some impacts, and we'll talk about that when we look at the forecast. Speaking of the forecast, there's pretty good agreement in numerical modeling for Franklin showing that turn toward the northwest, then gradually back north and then northeast, and you can see Bermuda right here. This is a pretty healthy distance. Now the wind field will be enlarging as the storm comes north, so it's still possible that tropical storming conditions could encroach close to the island, even if the track is this far away. But for now, this is pretty good news. We haven't seen a significant shift eastward back toward Bermuda, and that's what we'll still need to watch for. You can see all these black 96s printed on the screen. This indicates that this is a four-day forecast, so there is still some wiggle room here for shifts toward the west or the east, so something to keep an eye on if you're in Bermuda. For the moment, though, this trend is looking okay. We're not seeing a trend closer to the island right now. You can see, though, that there is some potential for this to get close to Newfoundland, and Canada may have to keep an eye on this in the longer range. This is farther out, about six days, so again, things could change as confidence diminishes the farther out in the future we go, but a lot of these models do get close, and so that will be something to keep an eye on. Here's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing that track and intensification into a hurricane, hence the black letter H is here, potentially quite strong during its closest approach to Bermuda sometime late Monday night or early Tuesday morning. You can see Bermuda is now just outside of the forecast cone of uncertainty for the eye of the hurricane. Uh, but again, the wind field could be rather large on the eastern side, so active weather may encroach on Bermuda, even if the eye is fairly distant. 
but we'll hope that this trend continues for a track far enough away from the island that it is spared the most significant impacts. And we'll keep an eye on Canada later on. Right now, the five-day forecast doesn't extend all the way up there, but something to watch if you're up in Newfoundland. Okay, we're going to switch away from Franklin now and talk about our other system, which is in the Caribbean and could end up being an impactful system for the Yucatan Peninsula, Cuba, and the Gulf of Mexico of the United States. We talked about the idea that the, the monsoon trough was going to lift north over the Western Caribbean in the wake of Franklin leaving the Caribbean, and that's what we have here. We, we have a big upper low over the Bay of Campeche moving to the west over Mexico, and this uh, southerly flow aloft has dragged the monsoon trough and associated moisture to the north. And so what we see now is this general lightly rotating region of low to mid-level rotation and uh, moisture kind of moving northward just to the east or along the coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula. If we look at a closer zoomed in loop here, What's going on is the, the mid-level low is kind of near the coastline of the Yucatan. However, there is an, a low-level vorticity maximum, which you can see here spinning a little bit, if you look with your eye, kind of zooming off toward the north. This is not very strong at the moment. We do see some southwesterly flow trying to develop into it, uh, but this is not a really intense area. There is some scattered convection on the northern side. One thing to note is that this is rather bubbly. It's a fairly new area of thunderstorm activity, and the fact that it's bubbling with such high frequency indicates that a lot of these updrafts are going up and then they're collapsing right away, and then new ones form in their place, indicating that the large-scale atmosphere in this area hasn't been sufficiently preconditioned yet to sustain convection over longer time scales, and it usually takes you know a couple of days of thunderstorm activity to kind of moisten the profile or destabilize it in a way that facilitates a stronger development of a disturbance like this. One thing I want to mention too on the larger loop here is check out this area of the Caribbean and right into the southern part of this little area that we just mentioned, there's no clouds really here, uh, no shallow cumulus even. You note that even in the areas without a lot of convection, uh, you know, if you're in an area of deep moisture, there's always these little cumulus congestus clouds forming and you usually have cloud streets all over the place, but over here, almost nothing. Completely blue sky in a lot of this part of the Caribbean. That's because there's a deep layer ridge nosing in behind Franklin, which is off your screen to the right, and we talked about this causing dry and stable air. There's large-scale subsidence over the Caribbean and uh, some drying that's associated with that and a pretty stable air mass. There's a little bit of a, not quite an inversion, but a stable layer right above the surface and you can see this nosing into the south side of our disturbance and so some of the southwesterly flow is actually ingesting stable air into this region so that's one reason why a development of this system may be delayed over the next couple of days it's unlikely to be rapid based on what we're seeing right now in addition because the mid-level low is closer to the yucatan uh, this little low level disturbance is likely to rotate to the left and we may see some interaction with uh, the Yucatan Peninsula itself and that land interaction could also delay development. So bottom line here, not expecting immediate formation of a tropical storm while it's in the Caribbean over the next couple of days. But once we have some time behind us, conditions are going to favor further development. This is the European Ensemble mean looking at the mid-level steering flow. Uh, this is out to Saturday morning, tomorrow morning showing the center of the mid-level low near the eastern coast of the Yucatan, like we said. And it's kind of stuck between two ridges. This is a big ridge over the southern U.S., and there's a, a ridge over the Caribbean as well, which we mentioned. And uh, because of this, there's pretty weak steering currents. There's not a lot to move this around. So we may see this meandering in the vicinity of the Yucatan Channel, the Yucatan Peninsula, and the surrounding waters for a couple of days, not likely to go anywhere quickly. However, there is a shortwave trough over the North Gulf Coast, which will be propagating down toward the south, and that will eventually dig down. You'll see it propagate toward the south and uh, kind of dig in and push uh, this out of the Caribbean. We'll see this ridge retreat a little bit, and so we'll get a little bit of a trough action here that will start to swing this up. This is a little bit easier to see on the 200 millibar chart where the trough currently is over Louisiana and Mississippi. You'll see this dive down. So you'll see this little smiley face shape to the streamlines. There's our system getting drawn north by that. And you'll see that uh, as we get into the middle part of next week, we have full troughing over the central and western gulf. And so there's this southerly flow that ushers this 
through the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see that this deep trough for the east, eastern U.S., the same thing that's bringing Franklin toward the north, is what will cause this to come north as well. So at the moment, we're not expecting tracks like this into the western Gulf of Mexico. Uh, that's not anticipated. This steering flow means that the eastern Gulf of Mexico is kind of the lane which will likely be threatened by any kind of storm that forms out of this over the next few days. Now you can see that because there's a trough here, there may be a little bit of wind shear, so conditions may not be fully ideal. However, it's a fairly weak upper level trough. So current models that show development here show that the system may be asymmetric and sheared for a short time, uh, but will quickly overcome that because the shear is not prohibitively strong. This is the European Ensemble showing uh, the member plot here where each red number indicates the development of where a cyclone could form. And you can see the cloud of possibilities by Tuesday afternoon next week. So we're talking about four days out here, uh, but you can see that in general, there's agreement from a lot of the members that there will be something developing in the southern Gulf of Mexico that is starting to get ushered northward. And you can see a similar thing in the GFS as well now, which had not shown development over the last few days, but has recently started to come on board and agree with the European model in some of its more recent runs. And so this is lending confidence that development may actually occur here. And conditions are generally favorable, except for that mild level of vertical shear. So something coming north and becoming a tropical storm uh, is likely at this point. And we see that from the National Hurricane Center, 80% chance of development as this generally moves northward. Worth uh, mentioning here that we talked about this general lane, the eastern Gulf Coast is the area to watch. However, details gonna be very hard to pin down. We noted that, you know, this is still a fairly disorganized young seedling of what may come and we don't have a great handle on where it's going to move or form precisely over the next few days. That's an important step in any forecast. So in thinking about which particular areas of the US Gulf Coast could be impacted, we're not gonna be able to tell you that until we actually see something form, we can pin the tail on the donkey, nail it to one particular spot, and then we'll have a, a pretty good idea. But right now, this is something to watch in general for this region. We'll probably see heavy rains over Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula over the coming days and some of these other Caribbean islands. And then as something starts to develop in the Gulf of Mexico, if it does indeed form, at that point, we can start talking about impacts to the Gulf Coast. But right now, something to monitor. Ensure you have a hurricane plan just in case, and we'll see what becomes of this disturbance. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.